Yo, it's your boy Brian B.Y. Jennings, and right now you're watching True School Sports. Yeah, though. When the two best come out, the fans are in for a real treat. Tell me the story of the sauna. He knows. the training camp. Well, tell me. At Matty's training camp, we are in the sauna. About ten guys in the sauna, and it came down to me and Vlad in the sauna. Do you remember this, Vladimir, at all? No? I, I mean, I remember the sauna, and I remember in, the uh, sparring uh, partners. Stangleworks Hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all in the sauna, a few guys in there. Yeah. Everyone starts popping off around us. And it gets down to him, and I'm over the other side. And I'm thinking, I've only, I've only had 12, 13 fights. But still in my mind, I was mentally in a competition with him. In the mind. Like, was it a competition? Right, he can say what he wants, he can deny it, whatever. Yeah. I, but I was honestly, prepared... Honestly, don't know what you're talking about. I was prepared to die in that sauna before I'd got out. I stayed I believe, in for like I believe, 40 minutes. Um, I believe, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't remember exactly that that moment, but I believe um, I'm standing in the sauna, people are walking in naked. So... Who uh, got out first? He did. He got out first. And what did you think at that time? I thought mental victory. That you built in your own world. Yes. That didn't exist. We both know it did exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, seriously. You, you can say you don't know what I'm talking about, but, but I'm seriously I know, saying it. And you know it did exist. I'll astound your eyes when I get down to the nitty. This thing's moving damn slow. Chill for an hour, then grease them all and still walk through the corridors with my hands on my bills. I still pass crews that amuse me not. Can't distinguish the English when they freestyle and jock. Try to pass by, you stand me down cold. You try to find my soul, save your rhymes for the mind. Nigga, I'll break it down for your headpiece and give peace signs. And ride the shepherdies, carry on. Never the crime to all mankind. Make a line, feel the pain. You can expect to see the new heavyweight champion and how a young champion should perform against an old one. You know, I'm sat up here now, I'm looking at all these people, and I know that 99.9% .9 of you all expect me to lose to the great uh, Vladimir Steelhammer. And um, by the late great Emmanuel Stewart back in uh, 2010, they mean a lot to me, they're very sentimental, so that's why I wear them. And I wear them for the biggest fight in my life, too. <laughs> <laughs> these are my magic boots. No. These are the ones. They're very old. Very successful. These boots are undefeated. In birth of the cold there in my shadow. To never have sunlight on your face. A beautiful face without a smile for so long. A beautiful smile to hide the pain. And I'll be the one with all the bells. Come on. <laughs> okay, people, thank you very much, and good night to everybody. Yes, uh, the heavyweight division. You know, it's changed a lot since we last since we last spoke. <laughs> Tyson Fury won the title. What do, what yeah. do you, what's your overall take on the heavyweight division right now? Well, that fight was terrible. To be honest with you, it was a horrible fight for boxing, uh, especially with the heavyweight division. It was terrible. But you know what? That's what the champ came back for. Although Vladimir Klitschko uh, looks to be uh, on his way out, I'm here. Yeah, and um, you know it's, it's... I'm here. The champ is here. Let's go, champ. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, in today's video, we're going to revisit, um, you know, a very important heavyweight fight that took place about five years ago. 
you know a lot a lot of time a lot of time recently on this channel we've been talking about Tyson Fury and just how great of a heavyweight we, we think he is and we're gonna go back to the fight where many people really began to believe uh, the hype that Emmanuel Stewart had put on this man uh, to become the next great heavyweight and the next dominant factor in boxing's glamour division. Um, Tyson Fury was basically, he was an underdog when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. You know, Vlad was on top of the world. He was the man of heavyweight. He hadn't lost for a decade plus. He had made 18 title defenses. Uh, was, you know, looking at tying the great Larry Holmes uh, consecutive title defense record uh, at number two all time, just behind Joe Lewis, if he would have beat uh, Tyson Fury. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of riding on this fight for Vladimir Klitschko from a historical standpoint and uh, just things like that. So um, nobody w w was really picking Fury because at the time, just giving, to, to give context, Fury's last fight before this one was against Christian Hammer. And then, you know, if you go back even further, he had fought the Steve Cunninghams of the world and the John McDermott's and the Nevin Pajic's and Nikolai Firthas. And in a lot of those fights, you know, he didn't look that great. He didn't look sensational. He didn't set the earth on fire when he fought those guys. You know, in those fights, he was getting hurt. He was getting dropped. You know, he looked like a very questionable heavyweight prospect. So this was a very big step up in class for Tyson Fury. It was his chance to, to, to show on the night that, hey, he had matured enough as a fighter to, to beat the Vladimir, Vladimir Klitschko's of the world. And that's, that, that's just what it was. So it was a 25th, 25th professional fight. Um, like I told you earlier, Klitschko had 18 title defenses coming into this fight. And um, I, 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 didn't score, I didn't score the fight. Like I didn't, I didn't score it round by round, but I did count how many times I thought Klitschko won a round because there weren't many rounds. that I, I remember I, I've watched this fight twice recently. And in both sit-downs of me watching this fight recently, I can't give Vladimir Klitschko more than two or three rounds. I mean, it was a very easy fight to score. Um, I, I don't know where the, where the commentators got off saying it was a close fight. They could have won either way and whatnot. It was, it was, it was really easy, easy to score due to the fact that Tyson Fury, in this particular fight, with him being lighter, with him being extremely quick with the size and the jab and the awkwardness, uh, he was able to offset a lot of Vladimir Klitschko's punch output and what he was trying to do in his game plan. So because of that, he was able to be the ring general. He was able to obviously display great defense. So he, in most rounds, he's ticking off two of the three major criteria that rounds should be scored on, which are ring generalship, effective aggression, and defense. So because of that, it was very easy to score most of these rounds. But just giving my little assessment and my takeaways from the fight. Um, coming, you know, first round, you know, we see Tyson Fury come out with herky-jerky, you know, fit, foot feints, shoulder feints, up and down to Vladimir Klitschko. And Vladimir Klitschko is biting on all of them. And when somebody like, when you get an awkward fighter like Tyson Fury that knows what he's doing, you don't want to bite, bite on all of his feints because you're, you're essentially, when, when, when somebody feints you, you know, when, when they fake where they're going to throw a punch and you bite on it, you essentially show your hand pretty much. And you let them know what you would do if they actually threw that punch for real. So early on in this round, Fury is hitting Klitschko with all kinds of feints, you know, and, and he's disrupting his rhythm and timing uh, immediately from round one, from the word go. He's using his jab from different angles and his foot speed already in this round. You can see there's a clear, crystal clear cut advantage in foot speed for Tyson Fury. You can tell that his feet move quicker than Vladimir Klitschko's feet, which is why he's able to box him and move him wherever he wants in the ring and be that ring general. Um, and from the beginning of that round, you see Vladimir Klitschko really fidgety, really, you know, biting a lot of these feints. He looks very anxious, and round one was easy to score. I gave it to Tyson Fury, and round one was a key round because it set, it set a tone to, to Vladimir Klitschko that, hey, you weren't just going to, you know, be able to do whatever you wanted here like you did to the Calvin Brocks or the Pulevs of the world. You know, you had to really, you know, work, work, work in this ring. And it's, it, it, you know, the way Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko is very important because Vladimir Klitschko isn't a world-renowned inside fighter. I, I would even go as far as to say that he can't fight worth a lick on the inside. So because of that, he relies heavily on rhythm and timing. And any fighter who can disrupt that rhythm and timing has a great chance to beat Vladimir Klitschko. That's why, you know, even though he didn't beat him all those years ago, uh, Sultan, uh, Sultan Ibrahimov early in Klitschko's title reign, Sultan Ibrahimov, the tricky southpaw, gave Klitschko some problems. That's why Fury gave him problems. That's why, you know, a lot of fighters gave him problems. And it's, it's also why he had success when he fought Joshua, because Joshua 
is kind of the same, has some of the same strengths and advantages that Klitschko has. He's a rhythm and timing fighter. He's more of a counter puncher, and he's a bit more athletic and has more hand speed. He puts he puts his punches uh, uh, he puts his puts his punches a bit to, uh, more together than, than Vladimir Klitschko in combinations. But he has the same strengths in the sense of he's. He's one of those guys where he needs rhythm and timing to, to, to beat you. Tyson Fury is so awkward and herky-jerky that he, he doesn't rely as much on his rhythm and timing to beat a fighter. He can beat you mauling you. He can beat you on the inside. He can beat you in a dogfight. He can beat you slipping and sliding, boxing you from the outside. So that's just my assessment of that. But, um, you know, one thing that was just so impressive about Fury in this fight was number one the quickness the foot speed but more so the poise the swagger and the calmness in relation to his I I experience you know because again like i said this is a Ty this is a tyson fury who just the fight just before this he's fighting the christian hammers of the world you know um he hadn't really had that big fight experience biggest fight he was, he was probably ever in before this one was the steve cunningham fight and steve cunningham was a cruiserweight who, who moved up who moved up to heavyweight um, and you know he he had struggled with the John McDermott of the world and the Nevin Pijix and the uh, Nikolai Firthas. He got hurt by him, um, but he had still won. He still showed resilience and won those fights. But he looked unimpressive. So, um, if you were somebody that followed Fury's entire career going into that fight, you'd be led to believe that hey, if he struggled against these guys, you know, use that triangle theory that a boxing fans like to use. If he struggled against these guys, then he's gonna struggle against this guy, and that's just that's just not how the fight game works. So. You can't really use that criteria for everybody, but I was really impressed with how calm and relaxed he was in there because it's not only his first championship fight, but it's also his his first, you know, he's fighting in a soccer stadium, 55,000 plus on the road. He's not in England, so he wasn't afforded the opportunity to fight on the road. You see what I'm saying? Um, another key round in this fight was round three. Round three was a key round because it gave insight into a couple of things. It gave insight into what bothered Vladimir Klitschko um, on that night, and it's also, you know, not to get too far off topic, but I also think it it, 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 it did give me a little bit of insight into how I believe Anthony, he'll fight Anthony Joshua, because Anthony Joshua and Klitschko are, are similar in style, they're similar as far as their strengths and weaknesses, and uh, when Fury switched to Southpaw, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, he was already an anxious fighter, but he became even more anxious, he grew more anxious, he got happy feet. He didn't know what to do. I mean, it, it got so bad. He was even more confused and gun shy. And it got so bad for Vladimir Klitschko that Tyson Fury literally dropped his hands right in front of him. And Klitschko did nothing. There was no combinations. There was no meaningful punches to get Fury's attention. You know, you sit this, sat there gun shy. So this happened for about the first two minutes of the, of the third round. And with about 30 seconds left in the third round, Fury switches back from Southpaw to Orthodox. And Klitschko throws a, an aggressive left hook and he misses it. So it was very telling into what bothers him and what doesn't bother him. And it was very smart of Tyson Fury who had gained some momentum in that fight to show Klitschko a different look. And it bothered him. It added another thing. For, it added that extra thing for him to think about. So just really intelligent stuff there from Tyson Fury in round three. Um, heading into the round five, it, this, is the, this is the first round of the fight at this point where Vladimir landed a clean right hand. It took him five rounds to land a clean right hand on Tyson Fury. So that, that's pretty much a great indicator of just where, um, how confused and where Vladimir Klitschko was mentally and just what he was seeing in front of him. Because you've got to understand, Tyson Fury is a matchup nightmare for most heavyweights. You know, he's six foot nine. He moves like a light heavyweight. He can box orthodox. He can box southpaw. He's comfortable on his front foot. Well, well at that time, he was comfortable enough on his front foot to, to press the action and maul you. And uh, he was definitely comfortable enough on the back foot to uh, use that, that, that reach and size. So just a matchup nightmare for Tyson Fury. And uh, one thing, another thing Tyson Fury did a really good job of, and I don't think this, think this gets talked about enough, is especially in the first four rounds when Vladimir was trying to find himself and, and, and establish his rhythm in the fight, one thing Fury did an exceptional job of is every time Vladimir would close that gap, so Vladimir Klitschko would shoot a jab and he would try to close that gap on Tyson Fury. And when he closed that gap, when he closed that gap, uh, or was attempting to close the gap, Tyson Fury would either, most of the time he would slip to his, depending, well, orthodox, he would slip to his, he would slip to his left, so he would slip towards the right hand of Vladimir Klitschko um, and duck, duck, duck below the chest going towards the waist and he would tie him up. And this really frustrated Klitschko because if he threw a jab and missed, Tyson Fury's ducking below the chest towards the waist and he's tying him up. 
and this is this is deceptive in the timing of Vladimir Klitschko, which is very imperative for a fighter like Klitschko because, like I said, we're not going to confuse him with Joe Frazier or like an Andy Ruiz type of fighter where he can he can get, get down and dirty on the inside. It's, it's not who he is. He's a classy boxer from the outside. He likes to use the jab and the right hand and the left hook from the outside. He likes to use that six foot seven. He's he's used to using that six foot seven. Uh, height of his jabbing and leaning off of, of the jab uh, and, and making it difficult for his opponents who are normally shorter than him. But in this case, he's fighting a taller opponent, so it, it was a, it was a tough adjustment for him. And, and it, it's a tough adjustment for a lot of fighters to fight Tyson Fury. But um, that was one subtle thing that Fury did amazing. You know, just the fact that uh, he was able to slip toward the right hand of Vladimir Klitschko to his left, below, uh, be just below the chest, going towards the waist, and, tie and he would tie him up. And this disrupted him all throughout the fight. Okay, and then um, in round 11, round 11 was a, uh, a key round in this fight. Fury got a point deducted in the 11th round, um, you know, towards the latter stages of the 11th round. He hit Vladimir Klitschko with not one, but two uh, solid left hooks right on, right on the head. Uh, Klitschko had kind of turned his back a bit, but not too much. And Fury didn't really punch him, like, extremely hard, but, it, you know, he made that motion to where he kind of grazed him on the head a little bit. And I, I didn't think it was enough to warrant a point deduction, but, you know, Tony Weeks thought otherwise. He deducted a point. And, you know, watching that fight live back then, you know, that I thought that would that might have cost it Fury because he's, he's on the road. You know, you don't know what the judges are scoring. Even though I thought it was a pretty easy fight to score, you don't know how the judges are seeing it in Vladimir's, you know, backyard, which was Germany at the time. So um, I, was, I was really worried for Fury. But luckily for him, he got the decision. You know, I, I think he won, uh, ex excluding the round with the point deduction, you know, I think he won, what was it, 11, nine, nine, of the, 9 of the 11 other rounds. So you could say, it was the, 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 as far as the rounds break down, it was 9-2-1. Nine, uh, 9 rounds to Fury, 2 rounds to Klitschko, 1 round where you could deem it a 10-10, um, an even round. Um, and, that, and, that, and that's what it was, you know, it was, it, was, it was Tyson Fury sticking his flag on the ground and announcing himself to the world as, at that time, the best heavyweight in the world and the funny thing I always find I always I always find so interesting about Tyson Fury's career is you know as with many fighters throughout the history of heavyweight boxing sometimes the, the, guy, the, the, the big fights are the easiest fights and the the easiest fights or what was supposed to be the easiest fights are actually the hardest fights so like with Fury the easiest fights have been Klitschko and Wilder as to where the hardest fights have been Nevin Pajic and John McDermott and and Otto Wallen and guys like that so, um, and it was the same thing, like, if you look at, if we can go back to, like, the Muhammad Ali's of the world. Muhammad Ali, some of his easiest fights were against the likes of Sonny Liston, but yet he would struggle against the likes of Doug Jones. So that's just boxing, and that's why you can, I don't like when boxing fans use triangle theories. It's, it's not smart to use triangle theories because, um, as the old adage says, styles make fights. Styles make fights, and while one fighter might be more talented than another, another guy, the other guy might have the attributes that that fighter doesn't like, so he's not as comfortable in the ring being the best version of himself as he would be against the guy who maybe who might be a lot more talented and more elite, but has the style that he feels more comfortable with in the ring. You see what I'm saying? So um, it was it was an easy it was, it was a great performance from Tyson Fury, you know. And I'll I'll say this, man. I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna uh, weigh that light when he fights Anthony Joshua, but I think if he wanted to. Uh, get down and wait and kind of mimic this performance against Anthony Joshua. I think it's very, very. Um, I think it's very doable. I think I really think it is because, like I said earlier, uh, there's some similar. There's a lot of similar attributes as far as strength, strengths and weaknesses between Anthony Joshua and Klitschko. I think AJ is a better combination puncher than Vladimir Klitschko. But that's that's about it. That that's the only difference I can see. Uh, they're both about six seven. They both have, you know, good jab, good right hand good left hook or for Anthony Joshua I would say he favors his uppercut more than the left hook um, they both really don't, aren't renowned for their inside fighting you know so listen I, I, I don't think Fury's gonna approach the fight like this but I, I could see him I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did so um, yeah that's just my take I, I, I went ahead and I revisited I revisited this performance from Fury multiple times recently and I just wanted to share my thoughts on that night that faithful night back in 2015 in Dusseldorf, Germany. So uh, what, what, what do you guys think? Like, how wide did you score the Fury Klitschko fight? And uh, I would like to know your cards. And if you agree with me, I had it about 9-3 for Tyson Fury. 
So yeah, l l let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe, and like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I am just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Showtime, Sean Porter. This is Eros Everyone, this is Jesse Vargas. You're watching True School Sports. You're watching True School Sports. All right. You're watching True School Sports. Stay tuned.